What's up, everybody? Um, I am back for the first day of December. It is Friday. We've got an eight-game slate. I'm coming off two straight victories, and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm ready to take a look at this slate, and um, I'm ready to win some money tonight. I'm still rocking. My MeUndies onesie came in the mail yesterday. The most comfortable thing that's ever been on my body. Um, this is not an ad. This is just me letting you know that MeUndies is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me outside of my wife. <laughs> um, I highly recommend everyone go and get a MeUndies subscription and get one of these onesies because they're great. <clears throat> anyway, we've got eight games tonight. Um, some interesting games, some not so interesting games, and um, let's dive into it. Uh, three games didn't have uh, spreads. I made those up accordingly, um, but it won't matter too much for these projections. First thing we're going to look at is uh, the Magic hosting the Warriors. Warriors, 11-point favorites, but the Magic have a 108 implied total. That is third on the night. Um, so they are in a decent spot. Um, let's uh, go ahead and update my shot chart because, you know, why would I do that before I start recording? That would be silly. It's a lot smarter of me to do that while I'm recording and waste everyone's time, right? That's, that's a much better way to do this. I hope everybody had a decent night last night. Um, I will be back tonight with a live before lock, so just one night off. Needed a little bit of a break. But we will be back and better than ever tonight. We hit 200 on the last one. Let's see if we could top that tonight. Alrighty. So the magic. It's... My projections generally um, underrate Aaron Gordon. I don't know why. I can't seem to figure it out because he doesn't sort of match up with the other guys that tend to be underrated, but we shall see. I think it, you know, it's always interesting to see the Warriors on the East Coast. Never know how that's going to shake out. Ooh, I need to collapse some of these columns. I am at critical mass here. What's the least important thing I could hide? Hmm, nothing. Well, I guess this name. There we go. Close enough. So, um, doesn't lead me to want to be on Aaron Gordon. Um, it doesn't feel like the best spot for him. I think Fournier is interesting. I'm just gonna mark him down now. And the reason I say that is now that Terrence Ross is out, I think that Fournier, maybe Jonathan Simmons might see a couple extra minutes compared to, you know, what they've been playing, which is always sort of interesting. Um Other than that I don't really want to take a look at Vooch, but I feel like I should. Same for Jonathan Simmons. So let's look at all three. Let's look at Fournier, Simmons, and Vooch. Uh, Fournier and Simmons basically need, we'll just say 26 each to get to value. Fournier has done that zero times in his past seven, which is awful. And Vooch, or uh, Simmons rather, has done that also zero times so oh that's tricky maybe I shouldn't be on Fournier I don't have a choice I'm gonna stick with Fournier I don't like Jonathan Simmons I just don't like I just don't like him in fantasy I don't know why something about him just doesn't register with me Let's take a look at Vooch. 
needs 39 and a half, so call it 40. He's hit 40 two out of his last seven. Uh, he had two very high 30 games as well. So I'll at least entertain the idea of Vooch. Um, but after digging in there and seeing the way that people have been trending, I don't necessarily love it. But um, I'm not seeing the love for Aaron Gordon tonight. And I don't, Alfred Payton isn't exactly jumping off the page either. So let's head to the, uh, let's take a look at the Warriors now. Um, right now, everybody's projecting to be in for the Warriors. Um, which is, you know, great. Although Clay, I think, is a little bit more dinged up than uh, everybody else. Let me double check. Yeah, did not practice yesterday. So it's possible we see Clay sit. Um, right now I have him in, though, for ease of uh, projections. If he's not in, uh, probably Nick Young. Caspi, maybe? I don't know. It's not really going to matter too much. All right, there we go. Let's fix that formatting. So, Warriors. I think Durant is what I'm liking here, but 10-1. Let's take a look at Durant. He needs 50 to hit it. Um, and I don't know. I, they're the number one implied total, so having parts of this game is almost essential. But nothing stands out from a matchup perspective. You know, Durant's obviously missed a couple in the past two or three weeks. Hasn't hit 50 at all. In 42 minutes, he still didn't get to 50. But um, I think this smells like a decent rebound for him. Not like locking him in or anything. I'm hoping to find some better values out there. But I wish that I liked this stuff more. Uh, I wouldn't touch Curry on DK. I'd look more at Durant or Draymond. I do kind of like Clay, oddly enough, but I don't really trust the ankle right now. I would need to hear more news. This one's tricky. I don't have I don't have a good feel for anybody right now on the Magic or the Warriors, but that's a game that's going to be, I would assume one of the chalkier games of the night so it's going to take a little bit extra research um, hit me up in the comments or on twitter if you have any thoughts on this magic warriors game because nothing's standing out to me and it's going to be tough to fade a lot of it tricky tricky Let's head to the Wizards. Uh, this is a game that does not have a line right now, so my uh, made-up line has the Wizards favored by one at home against the Pistons. Obviously no wall, and Beal is up in the air, but I assume that he's going to be playing. Um, in this case, they'd have the fifth highest implied total. I figure they'll be somewhere in that neighborhood. And the Wizards have just been a weird team with Wall out. Beal has been atrocious. Uh, Kelly Oubre has been the second coming. And I have very little confidence in my ability to figure out what's happening in, uh, in Washington. Um, they are playing the Pistons, so we have some interesting things to look at. I'll tell you what, this one fits Beal like a glove and Porter. And Gortat. And Keefe, but I don't trust his minutes. Let's dig in. 
All right, Beal is at 8,000. He needs 40. He certainly hasn't done it in the last two. But he did do it in the first game without wall, 46.7. He can get there. Look, I don't... He's on the short list. We can't overreact to a short, a small sample size. But it, it is concerning. Uh, Porter needs 35, which he's done. He also did it in the first game without Wall. Um, and he has gotten there one other time. Oubre will need... 25, which he's done three straight, all three games without wall. Not totally the best game for him, though. So I think tonight will be a night where I'm not looking at him uh, and hope that uh, it goes a little bit different of a direction. But I will look at Porter. And then Gortat kind of screwed me a couple nights ago. Well, we'll see. He's at 46 and He needs 23. He's been on short minutes these last two. Seems like they're playing a little bit differently without Wall. So I can't, I can't trust it. Then we'll head to um, the Pistons. Like I said, we don't have any... I, this line is subject to change right now, but... The Pistons are the seventh highest implied total. I expect them to be in the you know the top half. Um, I liked Drummond a lot in his last one, but the blowout sort of nerfed him. Doesn't mean he's not in play. Pistons have been playing well. Come on, I'm not logging back in. I'm already logged in. I don't log out. I spend more time on this website than almost any other website. So, if we look at the Pistons, I think that Drummond looks pretty good. And that might be it. I don't, this doesn't seem like a spot where I want to try to figure out the Tobias Harris, Avery Bradley, Stanley Johnson, Quagmire. So let's look at Drummond. Drummond needs 44. He hit 36 in his last time out in short minutes. Obviously the big one against the Celtics. So he's gotten to 44, we'll say three times in his last six um, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't look into him for tonight. Toronto um, and Indiana. Raptors are seven-ish point favorites. They have the second highest implied total of the night, which is surprising. Um, I wouldn't have expected that if you just asked me and showed me all of the teams and the matchups. But that means we need to take a look at them. I'm hoping that I can get to Lowry and this matchup looks good for him because I don't really ever like rostering DeRozan. I don't really like him as a player. But, you know, we're about to find out. That's not what goes there. That goes there. Okay. Yep, good. It's a Lowry night, not a DeRozan night. It makes me happy. Um, I don't want any part of DeRozan. That doesn't line up well. I do want to take a deeper look at Lowry. I think I'm going to take a look at Serge Ibaka as well. Um, Siakam got short minutes in his last one. No, that's not right, is it? Yeah, it is right. It was a couple nights ago that I played him. Um uh, so I'm interested to see if Surge is going to get an uptick in minutes again. But let's look at Lowry, who is 8,500 on FanDuel. Needs 42 and a half. Hit it his last time out. I think this is a better matchup than that was. Um, 
he's hit he's hit his mark one two three four out of his last six so yeah Kyle Lowry looks amazing he's been playing really well it's definitely a guy that I want to continue to ride uh, nope Just take that the way that it's meant And then uh, Surge needs 25, which he's not really doing even in those increased minutes, so never mind. I won't be mad if I end up on him, you know, if he's the last power forward type of stuff, but he's not a short list guy. That's all I'm going to really look at. Again, like, there's not a lot that jumps out even for having the second implied total, and that always scares me. I hate ending up on a lot of guys with, like, crappy totals. Go to Indiana now. If you think that Victor Oladipo is going to have um, fucking eight blocks and eight steals like he's been doing, it seems like a good night. I assume that the Raptors don't turn the ball over, and I feel like I've even said that on this and don't remember the answer. Okay, normally they don't. This year it's a little bit more, but still above average. Okay. Hmm. 104.5 implied total. Seventh on the night for the Pacers. <sighs> Friday, people. The weekend is upon us. So the Pacers. I'll take a look at Thad and Oladipo. I don't see it with Collison tonight. So let's take a look at Thad and Oladipo. Um. Thad needs 29. He's done that four straight games here in mid-November. His last three he hasn't gotten there, but he's been basically right on it in most of these games. I think it's a good matchup, so I definitely want to take a look at Thad. Again, he's not a he's not a lock-in guy. He's an end up with. I would never just like pick him immediately. And then Oladipo. He needs 43, which he's done four of his last six games played. He's getting DeRozan, so I will look at him. Um, that's not how you spell that. Oladipo. I will take a look at him. I'd be surprised if I end up there. That price is climbing big time. How much has it moved? Nope, that's not the same person. She's up to 86. He was at, you know, in the sevens a couple nights ago, so something to keep in mind his price is growing he's probably pricing himself out of where he needs to be his last couple games you know he have been buoyed by lots of steals and blocks five like there's seven there so that's 21 points 18 here's where he only gets one and comes in well under value there's nine so that's 27 fantasy points obviously he went off and then now, like prior to that, we get back into like the two or three range where he's in, where he ends up being right around value. So it's hard to rely on big blocks and steals, and I don't necessarily feel comfortable with it. I'm pulling him. I don't like it. You just didn't make the list. Now we get into a group of games that I don't give a single shit about. Bulls-Kings. 
if you watch this game, I am going to assume you're being tortured somewhere in a back alley or probably in that back alley that I've had to sleep in sometimes from my bad fantasy nights. It seems like a perfect place to torture someone and make them watch a Bulls-Kings game. This game sucks. Um, David Nwaba might be back. It shouldn't matter to anyone except for David Nwaba and his family because he's David Nwaba and the Lakers didn't want him. <laughs> so the Lakers don't want you right now and they're still bad. You should. You end up on the Bulls who are shockingly worse with less going on for their future. I feel bad. I like the Bulls. Car packs are terrible, and they're not going to be any good anytime soon. Alrighty, anything jumping out for the Bulls? Shit, a lot of it. Okay, so we need to look at Justin Holiday, Denzel Valentine, and Markinen because those are the guys that are going to bomb the most threes. Then the Kings give up a ton of bombed threes. Holiday, Valentine, Markinen. Okay. Holiday needs 29. He's done it. Man, they've been playing a lot of games in the past two weeks. Holy hell. One. He's done it twice, and he's boom bust. It feels like a GPP play to me more than anything else because I don't see people being on this game. Um, right now, the Bulls Kings, they're 14, 15th and 14th, respectively, from the way I said it. Um, out of 16 tonight in implied total. I don't think anybody's going to be on this game. So it's a good place to get some differentiation in a GPP, but Holiday feels uh, unsafe for me in cash. Denzel Valentine needs 31. He's done that in three of his last eight. Um, nope. Yep, that's right. He's playing big minutes. You just sort of need to hope that he's going to shoot. So I think Denzel Valentine feels a little bit safer than Justin Holiday. So I will take a look at him again. These are He'll be a guy that's that gets filled in, not necessarily um, a guy that I seek out. And then Markinen needing a lot, 34. Um, he's done that once in his last eight, and he's been close. It's a really good matchup for him, but again, he's it's to me it's just a GPP play because I think his ownership is going to be low. I, I think on paper he has like the ingredients of making a good DFS decision tonight, but I can't roster him in cash. Let's go to the Kings, where I'm confident that I won't look at it for more than a second. Uh, their minutes have been thinning out more and more over the past. Nope, that's the Bulls where I'm already at over the past couple games. Um, I can't seem to get any sort of read on their rotations. I'm already spending more time on the Kings than I would have liked. What are you going to do? It's not good if I skip a game. So. If you were to take anybody on the Kings, you would want to take no one. No one at all. Oh my god, I hate this team. Why sign George Hill? Why sign Zebo? Like, just be shitty and play young dudes. Don't play George Hill and Zebo 50 minutes of the 204. Like, it's just so silly. I don't. There, there are certainly good guys that you can bring in that don't need. 25 minutes a game. Don't roster any kings. Done. Alright, Grizzly Spurs. Um, I 
I can't imagine wanting too much from this game as well. Grizzlies have the worst implied total. Spurs are second worst. That's not true. They are 13th out of 16. I can't type Memphis, apparently, to save my life. I find it hard to believe that I'm going to want anything here. Still don't know if um, Chalmers is going to play tonight. He is questionable. The whole damn team is questionable as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I feel really bad for Marcus Gasol. Dude, I mean, not as bad as I feel for, uh, I don't know, Fizz, but... He's getting paid. Doesn't really matter. Gasol just has to do so much. Only guy that I would take a look at here is probably Tyreek. And even that feels like a stretch. He needs 34 and a half. done it once in his last six so uh, I'm just gonna fade the Grizzlies cool Spurs also a team that I don't expect to have anybody on although I clearly have to take a look at LaMarcus Aldridge because he's been playing out of his mind so we need to go grab the Spurs I kind of hope what well, I, I don't want this I feel like I'm going to paste this in, and it's going to be a great matchup for LaMarcus Aldridge, and he's going to put up 25 because of the Spurs. They're just not a team that I ever like to roster. I don't think I'm in the minority there either. No, uh, so all, they hate Aldridge tonight. Okay. Could be a Danny Green night. I'm good on the Spurs. That's a flat fade of that game. Heading to the Heat. Uh, this is another game where I had to make up a spread. Um, it's a middle of the pack-ish total. Right now, we know that Whiteside is out. Um, Kemba Walker is questionable. I'm assuming he's going to play. So we're going in with that thought process. It should be a close game, which is always helpful. We're going to, I mean, right off the bat, we know that we need to take a look at Bam and I think Kelly Olynyk. But this will tell a big story here. I'm almost done my coffee, which is depressing. Yeah, um, well, Bam's up to 4,700. Yeah, so Bam, you should not roster. Because I don't think that he's going to have the best of times trying to screw around with Dwight or Cody Zeller. So it's one thing if he's $3,500. It's another thing if he's 4,700. He's, he's not there yet. He's two years away from being two years away. Now, if we did want to roster anybody from the Heat, if if Kemba Walker doesn't play, I think we sh you should look at your boy Goron because, I mean, the alternative is Michael Carter Williams, and he's shitty. But let's take a look at Josh Richardson. Let's take a look at James Johnson. I'm going to look at Olenek. And then uh, I'm going to tell you guys to fire up Wayne Ellington in GPPs. So we can bomb some threes. It, this, I'm, I'm just going to rename this stuff. So from now on, this is going to be the Wayne Ellington hour, where all I do is just talk about why you should roster Wayne Ellington. Richardson needs 22. He's been there twice in his last seven basically three times 
but he's also put up single digits four times. So that's scary. I'm going to go ahead and not look at him any further. <clears throat> James Johnson needs 23 and a half. Nope, that's Bam. They're in different spots. That needs to move down. James Johnson needs 28, which makes more sense. He's done it twice in his last seven. He's been close. Only played 19 minutes in the last one, which is concerning. Um, and then Olenek needs 25, which he did in the last one out in 25 minutes. I'm not really comfortable. Like, all of these guys are just close-ish. <clears throat> I wouldn't touch James Johnson on DK. I wouldn't touch Josh Richardson on DK. I think the only person I really do think anything of is Olenek. It looks like DK's prices are just high for the Heat. Much higher on, like, that. Drogic's $800 more. Richardson's more expensive. James Johnson is more expensive. Yeah, I think I don't really see anything for the Heat. I'm going to move on. Having some trouble finding uh, guys that I like tonight. I thought that those first couple games were going to open up, but they aren't. Um, so again, I mentioned, I'm assuming that Kemba Walker plays. If not, take a look at Jeremy Lamb and don't roster Michael Carter Williams because he's a not good basketball player. Actually, roster him because uh, that is a perfectly acceptable fade for me. Oui. Okay, let's take a look at Batum. I guess. And then I definitely need to look at Dwight. Yeah, we're going to need to take a look at most of this. So. <clears throat> Let's start on Kemba. If he plays. I don't see the need he needs 36 that's just sort of his range um nothing stands out i want to look at dwight first and foremost he needs 39 and a half he's done that in five of his last seven um he's i think the best center i've seen so far he should be able to just treat bam with uh like really rude intentions <clears throat> MKG needs 24 and a half. Uh, he can get there, but I don't like it. So I think just Dwight is the play here. And then if Kemba is out, you know, I'll take a deeper look at Lamb and Batum. Well, let me look at Batum quick. 28. Um, he's been not very good in his past three, but he had been there in the two before that. No need to force it. Let's head to OKC. The Thunder and the Wolves. I have the Thunder favored by four here. They have the fourth highest implied total. I'm hoping that I can get two guys out of the Thunder. I just like the spot and I don't like the Wolves defensively. Did they play recently? I feel like they did. They did not. Certainly didn't. Good to know. It should be a close game. It should be a game that is pretty chalky. So definitely want to focus here. Great. Not a game that fits these clowns. The only people that shoot corner threes are the shittier guys. It's never helpful. Um, 
I'm going to take a look at Russ. I'm going to avoid Mello, and we'll see how Paul George shakes out. So Russ is 11-3. He needs 56 and a half. He's done it. Four of his last six for sure, and basically five of six. So without uh, too much shock, Russell Westbrook makes the short list and almost assuredly will be in my lineup. There just isn't enough high-end talent out there tonight, though we haven't gotten to the Pelicans yet. I'm not doing anything with Mellow, although if you're interested in Mellow on DK, I'm okay with that. And then Paul George needs 42, which he has done twice in the last six, almost three times. I'm fine with it, but I'd rather have like Otto Porter or Denzel Valentine and use the salary elsewhere. So just Westbrook there. We'll head to Minnesota. As per usual, I'm assuming Teague is in, but lately Teague has just been out over and over and over again, so who knows. Can't believe it's December already. Craziness. <clears throat> mm, not the best matchup for Minnesota either. Does Tyus Jones shoot threes? I'm look all over the place. Okay. So if T gets scratched and we actually get that news, which Eight o'clock start time. It's up in the air. Um, Tyus Jones is in play. Faux show. I think the only thing that I could look at here is Towns. I don't think that I'd like Towns more than Howard, but I don't want Wiggins or Butler. Awkward matchups tonight. So Towns needs forty-five, which he has done once. In the last eight. Man, Towns has not been playing very well from a fantasy perspective. How much is his salary down? Six hundred since his last time out. Interesting. Yeah, he's not been playing well. Um I think he's worth a look though. I'll keep him on the list at the very least. But I'm not seeing anything else from Minnesota. So let's move to the last one. Jazz and Pelicans. This is a game that also did not have a line. Um, they're going to be in the middle to bottom-ish pack for um, implied totals, I believe. Um, Hood I have out. And Howl Neto I have out. Um, I could almost assuredly say that I'll have Alec Burks in my lineup again if that all holds. His price is still a 100 more than the minimum on, um, on FanDuel, so it's hard to not have him. I would guess he's going to be... There's going to be incredible amounts of chalk on him. He should be... Um, people will be chasing as well. Just fine. It's, he's in a really good uh, spot from a salary perspective and the amount of minutes he's going to get. Alrighty, firing up the Jazz in a way. Everybody's in play. Let's dig in. Rubio needs 27. He hit that in his last two. Um, hadn't hit it previously but I will look at Rubio again Donovan Mitchell needs 34 he hit that on the dot last night and has done it three out of his last seven almost four 
So again, Donovan Mitchell is in play. I don't want to end up with two guys from the Jazz, but right now it feels like I'm, I'm going to. Um, I, I don't even need to look any further. Alec Burks is certainly here. You're crazy if you don't think that he's in play. He's at 3,600. He needs 18 points. I mean, he does that even when he's not getting minutes. <laughs> so after that, who else stood out? We'll take a look at Ingles. And we can take a look at favors. So Joe Ingles is at 5,600. He needs 28. That seems healthy. He's done it once. So I'll probably, I don't mind Ingles. I think that he's in a good scenario, but I don't, I don't think I'll use him in cash. And then favors needs 37. He's done that three times in his last seven I think that uh, looking at him is definitely in play but now we want to go to the Pels and see if this is a boogie night <laughs> a boogie night get it because there's a movie called boogie nights that's all I got for you guys today oddly enough tons of energy this morning Got up at uh, got up at five, raring to go. Look, check my phone. Saw that I put up 350 last night. I was ready to just run a marathon. No, I wouldn't. I would die. Um, I couldn't. I could probably get through a 5K without having a heart attack. That's about it. Pelicans. Feels like an Anthony Davis night as long as he doesn't get ejected. We'll take a look at Anthony Davis and Drew. Obviously, we'll look at Cousins, but it doesn't feel like a spot for him. AD is at 10.4. Yeah, 10.4. 10,400. Needs 52. Um, he's done that basically three of his last six, and I'm not even going to count the ejection. So, Anthony Davis, come on down. And then... Let's say Boogie needs 53. He hasn't been there, if I remember. Yeah, he hasn't been over 50 in a while. And I don't think this... I mean, look. He's DeMarcus Cousins. He is always, quote-unquote, in play. And <clears throat> if Gobert were here, this would be a different story. So he might have to be actually in play. Yeah, they're both in play right now, depending on how this gets built out. I won't prioritize Cousins. I'd prioritize Davis a little bit more. But if I can eat... I don't have a lot of power for... I only had Thad, so... Um, I think Anthony Davis will be my play, and I won't be able to get to Cousins. But I wouldn't hate it if you went to Cousins. And then Drew needs 33. Um, he's done that three straight games. No reason to think he wouldn't do that again. So the Pelicans look good. I wouldn't have expected to get seven representatives onto my short list from the Jazz Pelicans game at 9 o'clock tonight. But here we are. So that's a look at the short list. Um, now I updated that. That's bull spit. Formulas, name range. Getting to look behind the curtain at all of my crap buttons and stupid crap like that. And this is frozen? Yeah. This is uh, frozen. Can I save it? Nope. Awesome. Let's try to force this to close. See what happens. Nothing. I mean, it's doing shit. What's it doing?
What is open that is not actually open? Sorry guys, this sucks. Well, I think that I'm gonna lose this. <clears throat> so, freeze that screen. Um, because I'm not gonna be able to get out of this without it crashing. So what we're gonna do is this. Because everything's saved up besides the short list, so. I'm gonna hustle through this part. Denzel Valentine is probably going to end up in a lineup of mine, which is crazy. I want to show you guys what the, the optimal looks like, but I can't copy my shit right now. I can't do anything. Thanks a lot, Excel. No, I don't want to reopen it. 751 recovery file. That'll do. No. Oh. Yeah, open. Yes. It's always something, you know? Nothing ever just works. Look at this. Here I am just trying to show you the end of the video, and I have to drag it out now. And it's just it's straight up crashing. Well, I think that's a sign that I should stop this and not try to do this. But whatever, I'm dumb like that. I'll do it anyway. Maybe I won't. I hope this is still recording. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can just copy this individually. There we go. Now we're talking. So I'm interested to see how this pops. Um, it should be uh, pretty good. I know we're running long here. I know these are. Uh, this is too long of a video, but what are you gonna do? Well, it's interesting to me that three of those jazz guys popped out. That makes me incredibly happy. Um, Durant, AD. That's not bad. If I went boom, boom, and boom, that would probably be my starter. <clears throat> and I would probably go like this. And that would probably be the base of what I would build. Yeah, that's it, boys. And the to the point eight percent of women that actually watch this, that's all I got. Um, one last peek at the short list. I'm feeling okay about tonight. I'm hoping that I could fit that value in. Um, you know, a little bit of late news wouldn't hurt. But that's it. So if you like this, I apologize for rambling as long as I did, but please like the video. It really, really helps. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe to my Twitter. Um, check me out on the Reddit DFS site. I, I'll answer questions pretty much anywhere. And I will be back tonight at 6 o'clock for a live before lock stream where you can watch me finish off building my lineup, 
enter my contests and uh, just generally have a chat with you all. So thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you again tonight.